Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we'll be creating this single weight line art logo in Illustrator. Now this single weight line art style is very much on trend at the moment. And so we're going to be creating this logo. We'll be using some elements from the Scandinavian Summer Vector set and also the titular font family, all of which are Design Cuts assets. So let's swing across to Illustrator where I already have the artwork open and I need a new file of my own. So I'll choose File and then New. I'm making a screen size document at 1920 by 1080 pixels in size, but you can make your image any size that you like because we are working with vector objects. Now we're going to start with a horizontal line, so I'll click on the Line Segment tool. I'm going to make sure I don't have any fill, but I do have a stroke and I'll hold the shift key as I drag out a horizontal line. Now if you're following along with me in terms of document size, then you'll probably want to make your line around about 700 pixels in length. And we're going to set the stroke weight to 12 and that's going to give us an anchor point in our design. Below that we're going to add some lines for our C. So I'm going again to the line segment tool. I'm going to line up this line with the previous one, just using the Smart Guides to line it up. Now, if you're not seeing your Smart Guides appear, click the View menu and make sure that Smart Guides is checked. Now, for this line, I'm going to narrow down the line weight, and this is the line weight we're going to use for the remainder of the objects. It's going to be 9 pixels in size. Now we need to make this wiggly for the C. So with the line selected, choose Effect and then Distort and Transform and Zigzag. Turn Preview on so you can see what you're doing and select Smooth. Now the size value controls the amplitude of this wave. So we're going to reduce that down to six pixels. And then the ridges per segment controls how many ridges we have. So I'm going to up that to around 30. Now if you use even values, you'll see that the ends of the line go in different directions. If you use odd values, they go in the same direction. So choose which one you want to use and click OK. Now I'm going to nudge this line up a little bit. We're going to make some duplicate lines evenly spaced and for that we'll use Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. Turn Preview on so you can see what you're doing. I want my one original line and four copies, so I'll type four in the copies and then I'll start increasing the vertical offset so that we can move these lines down. I particularly like using the Transform Effect dialog for creating multiples of a shape that are evenly spaced because you can see what you're getting before you actually commit to using it. I'm happy, I'll click OK. And now to expand this, I'll choose Object and Expand Appearance. So it's now a set of wiggly lines. We're going to bring in our type at this point, so I'll click on the Type tool and I'll select the font I'm going to use, which is Titular. I'll click and start typing. My type is extremely small, so I'll select it and I'm going to increase it as a starting point to 120 points and just see how we go. Well, I think it could be a little bit bigger than this. But I don't want to keep making it big just to get all the way across the illustration. Instead, I'm going to space the letters apart. So with the Type tool still selected, I'll go up here to the Character option and start increasing the tracking. I'll increase the tracking until the type goes all the way across the document. Now for this particular typeface, there are other weights that I could test out. So instead of regular, I could, for example, try bold. If I think that bold is what I want, then I would need to scrunch up my type a little bit. Let's choose bold and we'll go back to the character option and just bring back our type a little bit. I'm also going to nudge the type down. We're ready now to bring in the elements from the original artwork. So I'll go to the expanded elements. I'll zoom into the area where the elements are that I want to use and they're up the top here. Now the elements are all in groups so I'll go to the selection tool and just click on the Statue of Liberty and copy her using Control or Command C. Come back to my document Control or Command V to paste it in. It's very small so I'll hold the Shift key as I stretch it. If I hold the Shift key as I do that it's going to stretch in proportion. And what we're looking at here is the height being somewhere between 375 and 400. 
I'm going to place it about two thirds of the way along the sort of horizon line here. We also need a tugboat, so we'll go back to our art and the tugboat is just here. Again, select it and copy it and bring it into our artwork, increase its size and move it roughly into position. For this, I'm going to increase it to around about 150 pixels in height. And finally, we want one of these little yachts. And again, holding the shift key as I size it up and just place it in position. I'm going to also adjust the Statue of Liberty a little bit. The yacht itself about 130 pixels in height. I'm not worried right now about the fact that the colors are not matching. So we've got the elements that we're going to use from the Scandinavian summer vector set. The rest of the elements we're going to make ourselves and one of those is going to be the trees. So we'll go to the ellipse tool, hold the shift key as I drag out quite a large sort of circle. Now I want it to have a stroke and I'm going to set the stroke weight to the same nine pixels as we're using. The fill, I want to borrow the fill from the Statue of Liberty. So I'll go to the eyedropper tool, make sure I have the fill targeted, hover over this and shift click to sample that color. We need a trunk for the tree. So I'm going to start this around about the center of the tree. Now at the moment, the line here has a blunt end. If you want it to be curved, you can go to the stroke panel up here and select round cap. I'm going to put in a branch for the tree. So just drag out another line here. Let's zoom in and just check out what's happening here. Now, one thing I need to be aware of is if I want to scale down this tree, I need to be careful that the lines aren't going to change weight. They will change weight if you have a certain setting selected. So I'm going to choose Edit and then Preferences and General. On a Mac, that would be Illustrator, Preferences, General. The setting I'm concerned about is Scale, Strokes and Effects. You want that to be disabled. If it's enabled and you shrink or enlarge one of these objects, then all the lines are going to change appropriately. And that's not going to work for this kind of art. So disable Scale, Strokes and Effects and click OK. I'm going to zoom back out. I do think my tree is a little large. I'll select over all of the objects and I'll hold the shift key as I just scale it down. At the same time, I'm going to group these objects with object and group. That means they'll travel as a group. Makes it a little bit easier to work with them. I'm going to make another slightly smaller tree. So I'll go back to the ellipse tool. I'll drag out an ellipse holding the shift key as I do so. I need to get the fill, so I'm going to borrow the fill from this object again. I'll give it a very small trunk here. Group these objects together and move it into position. Now I want this tree to appear behind the Statue of Liberty, so I'll select the entire group and choose Object Arrange Center Back and that just tucks it in behind there. We'll add a couple more circular elements. So I'll drag out another circle. Again, let's sample the fill that we want to use. I'm only going to use half of this, so I'll click on the Direct Selection tool, click the bottommost anchor point here and just press Delete. So I just get half of that circle. And I'm going to place it in position down here and resize it and just nudge it into position. I want another shape for over here, but it's going to be a filled black shape. So again, I'll make a circle, but for this one, I want the fill to be black also. So I'm targeting the fill now, go to the eyedropper tool and just shift click on something that's black. So it has a stroke and a fill. I'll go to the direct selection tool, select the bottom most anchor point and delete it. And we'll take that shape and tuck it in just over here next to the Statue of Liberty. And again, I want that behind it. So object arrange center back. The final objects we're going to create are a couple of birds and they're just bent lines. So I'm going to start with a very small line. So I'll just drag out a short line. I'm going to make a duplicate of this and I'm going to reflect it at the same time with object transform reflect. I'll choose vertical, make sure I have preview turned on so I can see that it's going to flip and click copy. 
Let's zoom in so we can see this a bit more clearly. If I move one of these pieces holding the shift key as I do, I'm going to be constrained to moving in a perfectly horizontal direction. So now I have the elements that will be my bird. I want to join them together. So first of all, I'll expand them with object expand. I don't need to expand a fill because there isn't one. I'll expand the stroke. And then I'll go with everything still selected and click Unite in the Pathfinder. So that gives me my bird. I'm going to place one just over here and Alt drag. That would be Option drag on the Mac to create another one over the other side of the artwork. Now it's just a case of perfecting the positioning of everything. So I'll just move these objects around until I'm satisfied with how they look. Of course, we have a very obvious problem right now, and that is that the color is not correct. So let me select over everything and go to the swatches panel and click here on new color group. I'll choose selected artwork, check both of these checkboxes and click OK. This is telling me that there are only three colors in this artwork, the black that I've been using and the two colors that have come from the original art. Now I want to keep this color and I want to keep the black, but I want to make everything that is the blue color black. Here's how I do it. Make sure that you don't have anything selected at all before you do this because we're working with global colors. I'll click on the color that I want to use and then I'll control click on the color I want to merge with it and go to the flyout panel here and choose merge swatches. Because the artwork that we brought in from the Scandinavian Summer Vector set used global colors, we have this instant way of updating the color to whatever it is that we want it to be. So we're finished with this piece of art now and you would obviously go ahead and save a copy of it. But before you give it to anybody, there are a couple of concerns. And one of them is that this New York City type is reliant on your computer having that typeface installed. So before you share it with somebody else, you should select the type and go up to the type panel and choose create outlines. So that turns the text into outlines and it will be visible on any computer. I would also go to the layers panel and make sure that every one of these objects that's formed a portion of the illustration, for example, all of the waves here were in a group. So if we can just click on the waves here, we'll see that they're actually in a separate layer and they are in a group. So make sure that things are grouped together logically. And I would also come in and probably label everything. So each one of these layers would be labeled with what is on that layer. That would make it just a little bit easier if you needed to edit anything later on. So that's a method for creating a single weight line art logo in Illustrator, taking advantage of some stock as well as incorporating your own pieces into the illustration. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Illustrator techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.